Good day. My name is Wilson Rodriguez from Inticon Incorporated. Inticon is a company that specializes in occupational safety, health, and environmental instrumentation. Today, we're here to talk about the ISO 13137, a standard that requires certain characteristics that a farm must have. Here, we have a, a calibration system, a, a system with uh, flow meters and a safety with a manicator gauge and a primary flow calibrator. What we're going to do today is we're going to simulate back pressure. Um, basically, according to ISO 13137, there are certain important requirements. Number one is constant flow. Constant flow means no matter what happens to the pump when the filter gets clogged, as the, as the filter gets clogged, the pressure is going to increase, the pump must be able to maintain the same flow rate. Constant flow means that once you set the pump, in this particular is to two liters a minute, this is the Gilead 3, two liters a minute, this pump will maintain the flow no matter how much back pressure you generate. So we could do this test with any sampling pump. It could be any brand, any sampling pump in the marketplace, but it's important to check. Is this pump able to work with the back pressure that you will find in a work environment? So let me apply back pressure here. You guys will see here, as we talk, 20 inches of water, and look at this, the flow is still at two liters a minute. You know, this is a constant flow pump. If you guys look at the pump itself, as we increase the back pressure on, in the magnet healer gauge, as we increase the back pressure, the flow stays at two liters a minute. The flow fault, which is required by ISO 13, 137 turns on, and between 60 to 120 seconds, the pump will shut off, depends, depending on how much uh, back pressure the pump is being generated. This is very important when you're working on the field, so that if your filter gets clogged for one reason or the other, the pump is able to compensate, as you can see here. This is a very important performance check, as you can see there, the pump shut off, and according to the ISO 13137, it tells you that you should be able to turn it off and back on again. However, if you have a clock, you're able to determine for how long the pump ran for. So if the, pump, if the sample was for eight hours and you ran for five hours, you're able to see how many hours you ran for. And then if you only have three hours left, you're able to continue your sample. So if I turn it off and back on again, you guys will notice that the pump will go back to its uh, original flow rate. Here, we have another pump that we want to do a test for. Uh, this, this pump here is the, this pump here is the smallest pump in the world. Uh, this pump has one feature that no other pump company in the world has, and that is STP, which means the company is able to compensate for temperature and pressure, which means that with this secondary calibrator panel, if we have 20 of these pumps with an internal STP sensor, we're able to calibrate with this system here and I will show you right now, real quick. We set the flow rate at 1.5 liters a minute. Uh, at 1.5 liters a minute, we're calibrating this pump. So if we were trying to calibrate two liters a minute, all we would do is just adjust the flow to two liters a minute. In this case, we'll leave it at 1.5. And you will see here, as I increase back pressure on the pump, 22 inches of back pressure, you will see that the pump still compensated. You will see that the light still is green, which means the pump will work under that back pressure for more than eight hours. Uh, and again, STP is, a, is unique, uh, being the smallest pump in the world, no adapters, no attachments that you can use this pump for high and low flow sampling, low flow to do gases and solvents, high flow to do particulates, and the pump with the STP sensor automatically compensates for temperatures of temperature and pressure. As you see here, I applied 22 inches of back pressure, pump is constant flow. If I, if I was to exceed the performance uh, of the pump after so many inches, then you see the relay comes on, which means that it goes into the full fold mode. Again, the pump forces itself to stay within the plus or minus 5%. If we don't correct the problem right away, then the pump, if we correct the problem right away, then the pump goes back to its original back pressure and will continue to monitor. This happens when the worker falls the hose and then automatically after a few seconds because back there's no more operation, then the pump will continue to work. Then we have here 
another pump, which is a, a pump that could take up uh, up to 50, 60 inches of back pressure. Uh, this pump here right now, uh, a one liter in many could take up to 60 inches of back pressure. A two liters in many could take up to 60 inches of back pressure. So we'll set it here to turn it on. Uh, ready, it should be ready to go in a second. Let's set it up to make it go in a second. There you go. And then what we're going to do too is the same thing with a similar back pressure, like back pressure and filter. So we're going to close the valve here. You will see here that the pump is at three liters a minute. Three liters a minute, okay? And then we're going to apply, look at this pump, 40 inches of back pressure. 40 inches of back pressure, the light still green, which means that the pump could operate at three liters a minute with four inches of back pressure. This is important when we're going out on the field to make sure that the pumps are constant flow, that the pumps are going to maintain the flow within plus or minus 5%. Not all pumps that are manufactured out there are able to have and withstand such high back pressure capability. This is important when the filter gets clogged. Filter gets clogged, you don't need to replace filter automatically since the bank is able to do uh, back pressure, high back pressure in the battery. The higher the back pressure, the more the current of the battery goes, which means that you have to recharge the battery. So with this pump, you're able to work at any flow rate, depending on the application of the pump, for very harsh environments. This is very important to make sure that the equipment, the primary flow calibrators have their certificates according to ISO 17025. And here, guys, what do I have set up here? I have a primary system generating more than 40 inches of back pressure. What I'm going to do here is with my primary flow system, I'm going to generate a bubble. Look, 3,000 cc's. 3,000 cc's of more than 40 inches of back pressure. This is very important for us when we're evaluating the characteristics of an air sampling pump according to ISO 13137. So to summarize, constant flow, being able to withstand high back pressure. Two, flow fault. If the pump goes out of its tolerance performance, the pump must go into fault, continue to maintain that flow, and if you don't fix the problem, it will go into a shutoff mode. Three, the, pump, the pump must be, must be radio frequency shielded. So if you're using a walkie-talkie, the walkie-talkie or radio transmission cannot change the flow rate of the pumps. And also magnetic, electromagnetic sensitivity to make sure that those pumps are not going to change the flow. And there's a standard, an ISO standard that requires for these pumps to be electromagnetic susceptible. So to summarize, ISO 13137 is a standard that gives us the guidelines for the importance of having these characteristics that I mentioned. Thank you very much.